Well, praise the Lord, it's time once again for the Speak Faith broadcast. And I'm glad, uh, I call it the Speak Faith broadcast, that's my radio program, Speak Faith Live. <laughs> and uh, as you note, uh, live even when we make mistakes. <laughs> At any rate, uh, we do have a show for you today. I uh, want to talk about several things. I've got the lower thirds running on the uh, lower third there of the screen. You can see them as they display. If you ever want to go back and get a little more detail on any of those notifications, you can always start the video over and pause it at that point or scroll it back, you know, and pause it at that point. If you're watching it through YouTube or Rumble, and by the way, that's one of the things I want to mention is that Rumble is out there. We're trying to get as many people as will to join us on Rumble and subscribe. And the reason for that is, very important reason, there is coming a day, not too far off, I'm fairly sure, that we won't be able to broadcast the Word of God and the teaching of the Word of God freely on YouTube. Because YouTube, let's face it, is in the pocket of people who are against preaching the gospel. There you go. I said it. So, Rumble. All you got to do is go to rumble.com, okay? Rumble.com slash speakfaith. Please go there, create a free account on Rumble, absolutely free, and then subscribe to our Speak Faith Live netcast, and that is absolutely free. So that is enough said. The thing is, as believers, if we are constantly talking about how big tech's out to stop the preaching of the gospel, we got to go places where they allow the preaching of the gospel. You know, it's the old saying about eat your own dog food. <laughs> we got to practice what we preach and eat our own dog food. We got to go somewhere where we, if not be supported, they probably won't support us in one sense, obviously, but they will at least allow us to preach the gospel. And that's important. Amen. All right. Uh, as I say, all of those messages, all of those lower thirds are important. So take advantage of those. And uh, I'm going to let it play out here and stop it on the rumble notification right there. And we'll close it out. Now, let's get into what we want to talk about on the program today. Uh, it's very important to understand the times we're living in. You know, these are the last of the last days. There's no question in my mind about that. The more that I see, the more, uh, and I, you know, I don't watch the news per se. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch CBS. I don't watch any of those news programs because, frankly, they'll fill you with doubt and unbelief. <laughs> okay? So, you don't want doubt and unbelief. Therefore, I don't pay attention to them. I don't listen to them. However, if you are hearing of things based on that, all right, uh, and the only exposure you get to public events is through that, you're not going to know all the things that are going on in the world. That's why on speakfaith.tv, we have Joe Morris's end of days update is to keep you informed of the things the news media is never going to cover. Okay? But everything that we're seeing around us, everything that we're seeing to do with reports of what I hear through the body of Christ is there is a problem. Even Rick Renner recently was, was talking about this on his program. He just started the teaching, just started to study that he's going to continue for some time on teaching specifically the individual points of the Apostles' Creed. And he gave us his reason for talking about the Apostles' Creed that so many Christians don't even believe the essential, basic, elements of Christian doctrine. 
And Rick Renner, if nothing else, is a teacher and an exhorter in the church, and the Lord has dealt with him about teaching the body of Christ the importance of understanding the Word of God, knowing what the Word says, and believing certain principles no matter what. No matter what your denomination, no matter what your background, no matter what you read on Facebook. Oh, wow, don't get me started <laughs> about the things you see on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. Christians argued back and forth on Facebook is the least best way, <laughs> the least of the ways for you to get any kind of teaching from the Word of God. I don't care who they are. I mean, really, there is there are just so many things out there that are truly false doctrine. And you need to just leave it alone. Don't argue with them. Don't fuss with them. I mean, a mature Christian is not about gendering strife. And that, unfortunately, is what foolish and unlearned questions do, which that could almost be the subtext of what Facebook is. <laughs> foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing they do gender strife. Amen? All right. I say all that to say this. There are people who are getting into a state that I like to label. Now, you ready? This is one of those billisms, okay? <laughs> Brother Jim Howard has what he calls Jim-isms. <laughs> well, I have, I have things I call Bill-isms too, okay? Just my way of putting things. And this is one of them. Spiritual entropy. Spiritual entropy. What is spiritual entropy? Well, you may or may not be familiar with what ent entropy is all about. Entropy is the complex systems getting less complex, breaking down. We could put it this way. Ordered systems becoming disorderly. You see what I mean? Ordered systems becoming disorderly. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you take an apple and you put it outside in the rain and the wind and so forth, it will wither and it will gradually rot into nothingness. I mean, you leave it there long enough, it'll be gone. If an animal doesn't get it, it'll be gone because it rots away. That is an illustration of entropy. You see what I'm saying? Now, entropy is a scientific term. All right. And there's a lot of science out there that is false. False science. Okay, let's look at a, at a verse of Scripture. Uh, let's look at 1 Timothy 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. And really, that's what we're talking about here. Keeping that which is committed to your trust. The doctrines that you've learned, the basic sound doctrines of the Word of God, keep those doctrines. Avoid profane and vain babblings... Again, Facebook. And oppositions of science, falsely so-called. You see that? Oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Now, why is that? There are things that the Bible has to say about... Um, well, let's, let's give a few examples. I've got a little something on my microphone there. I'm going to try to get it off. <laughs> like I said, this is live. We don't we don't edit anything. Um, there are teachings that are out there like evolution. Now, we'll we'll talk a little bit about evolution as a good example of this. All right, here's what evolution is all about. If you like me, when I was growing up in school, elementary school, high school, and so forth, we learned about the theory. Of evolution. Well, if you look up the word theory, a theory is not something that is proven true. Otherwise, it's no longer a theory. It's a fact. It's a truth. Okay? The theory of evolution is the idea that less complex creatures 
amoebas, whatever, could gradually evolve and become, you know, swimming creatures in the in the waters, and then they eventually grow legs, and then they eventually become a lizard, and eventually become, you know, a crawling uh, mammal of some kind, and then eventually maybe become an ape, and then eventually become a human. Okay? There was a book out many, many years ago <laughs> when I was coming along that was called From Goo to You by Way of the Zoo. <laughs> Amen. I kid you not. If you haven't seen that book, it's out there somewhere. It's been probably out of print at this point because it goes back a long ways. But from From Goo to You by Way of the Zoo. And that was the theory of re relativity. All right? Now, if it's presented as a theory, it's fine. I could have a theory. You know, if I postulated a theory, talking about from a scientific aspect, and I said, I believe that nothing has layers. In other words, a, the existence of, the non-existence of a something, a nothing, has layers. Okay? And I could postulate that theory, and I could put it in scientific, you know, uh, verbiage, and it would, it's a theory. It would make it true. You see what I'm saying? Anything you can think of could become a theory. But if you go back and study what they have discovered scientifically, they find tadpoles, they find bullfrogs, they find fish, they find lower primates, they find men, in terms of their bones, they don't find anything in the middle. There are no transitional creatures. Now, why is that? If the theory of evolution is true, there should be transitional creatures along the way, right? Well, I'll tell you why that is. Because the Bible is true. And what does the Bible say? The Bible, let me read it to you here. The Bible says concerning this issue, but God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and every seed his own body. In other words, there are types of bodies, types of physiological structure, and as God pleased to do it, he created different bodies. 1 Corinthians 15, 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. That's the point he's making here. A man's body structure is not the same as a fish. All right? So not all flesh is the same flesh. There's one kind of flesh of man, another of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. See that? Now, if you take those references and compare that to the theory of evolution and what they think occurred, it shoots it in the head. <laughs> Because there's not the same flesh. They don't evolve, is basically what this is saying. And this is the Bible. Then it goes on to say in uh, verse 40, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is, verse 41, There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, the Word of God says that we're to go from glory to glory, we individually. And you can transition from one form of glory to another, but not physically. I will never be anything other than a human male. No matter what happens, I'm not going to evolve and turn into some higher being physically. Okay? That's just the way it is. The Bible says that's the case. And by the way, let me throw this in here. If you're a male, you're not going to become a woman. <laughs> Your flesh is set as God has pleased. Okay? I know. A lot of folks think that's controversial. It's not. It's Bible. Amen. All right. Point is, that's the theory of evolution. And it is never, in real true scientific circles, never presented as fact 
but as theory. However, however, in the news media, like we were talking about earlier, in magazines, and even in textbooks that our children read and grow up with, it's presented as truth. It's not the theory of evolution. It's evolution does this. Evolution does that. This creature evolved to that creature. That's just the way it is. They treat it as truth. It's not. As we've already read, there's only one kind of body of man. There's other kinds of bodies or physiologies, let's put it that way, of different creatures. They don't evolve. Now, they learn to adapt. You know, a lot of people say, well, evolution is proven by this little bird that uses a stick as a tool. It's learning to use tools. That just means the bird's pretty sharp. <laughs> it adapts. There are adaptations made by creatures but they don't turn from one creature to another creature. Okay? Now, I don't mean to get into a whole long discussion of evolution. That's not my purpose. My purpose is, look at where you're receiving your information. Look at where you're receiving your information. Are you getting it from the Bible, which is truth? John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Word of God is truth, not the news media, not the textbooks, not even scientists. See, that as a, again, there are science falsely so-called. Don't be swayed away from the Word of God because of science. True science, I'm going to say something right here. True science will always agree with the Word of God. Now, how do we know that's true? Well, there was a point back in medieval days when people actually believed, the, the scientists of the day, actually believed that the world was flat. Matter of fact, Galileo got in trouble by saying it wasn't. <laughs> you know, he was excommunicated. All kinds of terrible things happened. And why? Because he questioned the orthodoxy of their science because he didn't believe that the earth was flat. Well, here's the thing. The Bible says that the earth is a sphere, spherical, okay? That's basically what the Hebrew is talking about. It's spherical. Now, actually, today we know scientifically that the earth is not a ball, round, perfect ball in space. It's actually kind of squashed. It's like he took the ball and kind of squished it from the top and bottom. It's wider at the equator than it is around the poles. All right? And that makes sense. If you, if you take a ball and spin it fast enough, it gets wider, you know, off its axis. You know what I'm saying? So the Earth is spherical. Now, from space, it looks round, and that's fine. But it is spherical. It is like a sphere. All right? Now, the, Bibles talks, the Bible talks about the world being spherical. It talks ha about it having a north, south, east, and west. It talks about direction as though going around the planet. I heard a joke recently <laughs> that I kind of like. It It was a... It, 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 people claim this is true. I don't know if it's true or not, or if it's just a joke. But it, if, if it is true, somebody messed up big time. <laughs> but they were having a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. And the sign said... Flat Earth Society meets here at 7 o'clock tonight. We have chapters all around the globe. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you need to think about that, guys. Even the Flat Earthers think that the, the Earth is spherical. It's all around the globe. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I'm sure he probably got reprimanded after he put the sign up. They went, whoa, God, what are you talking about? I don't know. I Sometimes I think the people that are in the Flat Earth Society, they're either determined to be ignorant, let the ignorant remain ignorant still, or, or they're just having fun at our expense. I don't know. Anyway, the point is the Earth is a sphere. And the Bible said it was way back. Okay? 
And scientists today agree that the earth is spherical, just like the Bible says. But in the Middle Ages, when science, falsely so-called, said the earth was flat, all kinds of dire things happened to people who believed it wasn't because of the orthodoxy. Okay? So, let's go back and think about that scripture that we originally started with, 1 Timothy 6.20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding, 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 profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Okay? Just because they claim science doesn't mean it is science. We had a recent issue with uh, the pandemic where we had one man who said, I am the science. Well, let me tell you something, brother and sister. There's not any one man that is the science. And the very essence of science is you prove it to be true by repeatability and by testing. You don't just proclaim something is true. You test it. Well, in the absence of testing, in the absence of thorough scientific study, they released some medicine that you know well of, and he just proclaimed, oh yes, this is, this is sound, this is effective, and did it from the high point of, I am the knowing, all-knowing science. And guess what? It's proven that it really wasn't that effective to start with. <laughs> All right. And again, I'm not here to talk about all of that. That's not my purpose. That's not why we're talking about this. But I am showing you there is science falsely so-called. Don't let it sway you. Okay? Study the Word of God. God's Word is the truth. It's always the truth. It'll always be the truth. Not one jot or tittle, which jot and tittle is a good King James way of of saying period or comma, is never going to pass away, ever. It's not going to change. The Bible's not going to change to meet your desire for society to change. Okay? Oh, we believe it ought to be this way now. We don't believe it that way anymore. Bible still says it's one way. Bible still says truth is truth. Amen. There you go. Another quick example, climate change. Everybody's talking about climate change. Well, let me read you a scripture, Bible, scripture, Genesis 8, 22. While the earth remaineth, let me ask you something. When the earth was created, it began. It is still around today. It will one day pass away in fervent heat, yes. But for now, it remaineth. Do you agree with that? You ought to, or you're, you're on it. <laughs> All right? While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, in other words, the seasons, and summer and winter, in other words, the seasons, the, and day and night shall not cease. Cold will exist. Heat will exist. Seasons will change. Did you know seasons change? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Summer is hot. Winter is cold. Wow. Science. <laughs> Amen. But here's the thing. Man is not out there flipping switches and affecting the climate of the earth to the point that coal will no longer exist. It'll all be... Forever warm. No. As long as the earth remains, there's going to be cold, there's going to be heat. There's going to be seasonal change. There are historically times of warmer time, and then there are historically times it gets cooler. It doesn't have it, and this has been in that way for thousands of years. Okay? And man is not changing it. That's the whole point. So, you can pass every law you want, and you can spend trillions and billions and quadzillions of dollars and throw it all away, 
but it's not really going to affect the climate. It's going to be a seasonal change. Even and when I talk talk about season, I'm not talking about just summer and winter. I'm talking about over epochs. Okay. Hallelujah. So this is science falsely so-called. And they espouse climate change like it's a religion. Well, let me tell you what. We talk about having faith. We talk about confessing the word and having faith and calling those things that be not as though they were. Amen. Romans chapter 4. And yet, I don't know if I've got enough faith to believe that what little old man does with his car is going to cause the earth to get super hot. That takes a lot of faith. Evolution takes a lot of faith. But it's not faith in the Bible. It's not godly faith. It's a misplaced faith in the science falsely so-called. Now, why get into all of this today? Because there is such a thing as spiritual entropy. If you get away from the core of God's Word, you will go from a solid Christian state to a degenerated Christian state. Now, the Bible calls that backsliding. And I guarantee you, if I said, well, today on the program, we're going to talk about backsliding, everybody would have gone and turned it off. (laughs) Amen. But see, people want to hear about backsliding. But backsliding is a literal biblical principle that we're going to get into in the next netcast, the next Speak Faith Live. We're going to talk about backsliding. And don't turn it off. Don't tune it out. Because you need to know about spiritual entropy. I have a new audio teaching that is on our website, speakfaith.org. That's speakfaith, two words run together, dot O-R-G. Look down the left-hand column till you see the audio message archive. Click on it, and the top of the list, the most recent teaching from just a few days ago, is the science of spiritual entropy. And that has this entire teaching in it, okay? So I encourage you to go there, click on it, download it, listen to it, play it, whatever. It's an important message. And we're going to continue it on the next Speak Faith Live, all right? So in the meantime, I want you to uh, write us at our email address. Uh, We're going to go ahead and turn on our lower third for that. And... uh, allow you to see our email address, and remember to fulfill the Word of God, as it says here. I started with the last one first. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. (laughs) Hallelujah. We're out of time. Join us again next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God.